Hello everybody, this is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today's December 6, 2018. This is the Black Star Update Report for newsletter number 49. Very, very active week. Lots of uh, success for the investigation. Lots going on. This is the biggest newsletter that I've published. The featured section is extremely long and uh, it's a real Gem. This is a really good newsletter right here. Team, a lot of team commentary on uh, the anomaly vortex, and uh, two update videos for me this week on the big quakes. And uh, some are going to be surprised to realize that seismic event indicators say Earth has now entered the second Earth change lull period for the 2018 Earth orbit cycle relative to the Black Star position in the Libra constellation. Now, let's look at one of these diagrams. So this is the point that we've been looking for. These are our four key marker positions. We're going to start the new cycle here, third week in February 2019. This is where we got the jolt passing outside orbital position in August. This is where we are now. See, we just got the jolt. And we're moving into the lull period. That's going to run all the way around to February, this period that's right here. And see this box? This is where we had seven, seven magnitude earthquakes in a real short period for the last two years. Five over an eight-week period after we got the jolt. We get two here, and we get five here. That's what we got for the last two years. But remember that the mantle plume connections were not yet made to the magma plume formation. So this is the first backside alignment that we've had this type of arrangement rather than just what was going on in the Pacific Ocean and Ring of Fire. That's when we had six point six pointer here, six pointer here, six point eight, six point eight, six point eight. See where it's near the terminal ends? That's the pattern. We've identified part of the new dynamic based upon deep magma plume triggers. So we are in kind of uncharted water. Some things are going to be the same. Some things are going to be different. So just looking at the year over year data this is Alaska right here, week 41. Just like we had New Zealand and New Caledonia for the last two years. These quakes here were picked right to the day. But they happened on the first day of the reporting period. So it's a little bit deceiving to happen in the same week. Yes, this event came late. Doesn't appear though, does it? Because it, it came in 41. Thing is, this reporting period ended on the first. We had the event the day before the end of the cycle where these both of these came at the beginning so even though they happened in the same week then when you take this week and this week then you're almost you, you see what I mean you see what I mean look at the dates so you have an event that's almost two weeks later for this cycle but it falls in the same week because of the way it's the beginning and the end so it just looks just a little bit deceiving then um, so what you see the pattern of sevens that we get at the backside alignment that's right here and this right here really should be shaded yellow too because of changes that have been made and the lots and that's like I keep saying lots there's tons of information in here and everything isn't being shared on video on YouTube so to get your hands on the information you really want to get your hands on the newsletter and be able to read our commentary back and forth this is a very good presentation right here share this link with other people Michael this this right here good video visual presentation Michael uh, Vera, very good interviewer. I'm uh, still a little bit surprised over the lack of response from that. One of my best presentations, if not the best presentation ever. Then uh, this, looking at 2017, see we had 24 consecutive weeks, nothing, just like we had this week. We'll see if that follows 2019. I have my doubts. Down at the bottom of the chart, this is Alaska. Right here, New Caledonia already filled in for this week. Remember, week 42 is going to end this Saturday at midnight. These values ended last Saturday at midnight. So we're going to get our two events from 2000 for 2018 back to back. And the, the math is calculated, identifying the differentials. This is going to be a gravitational black star Jupiter induced quake. This is going to be the electromagnetic vortex quake. See the jolt right, that's right here? You get that with the electromagnetism, just like we got in August right here. You get the jolt, you get the outside orbital position, you get the jolt, and bam. 
let's look at uh, very quickly Ryan's diagram here this is what just happened so you kind of like you have two planets there and you have jolts see we're in the jolt zone right here it's really the earth that's back here thing is black star and the Sun are on the same side of us passing behind the Sun there and they are on the opposite sides of us when we pass between the Sun and the black star in May so this is the jolt that we received in August this is the jolt that we're going to receive in February we're going to get to that 90 degree position third week in February then get a jolt right after that that's what's going to happen so this is the diagram that's that you apply to the scenario that we're in right now and let's see if there's one more this is the other diagram this is the numerical lines from outside world position here to here so this is when we're actually going to pass behind the black star but we needed a combination of the black star and Jupiter to get the gravitational alignment and then the electromagnetic alignment with the vortex that's not shown in this diagram we can show you that in a, a different diagram much more much much more to show you in the longer report trying to get you through this this uh, report right here so this is already filled in you can see the mini law and if you're listening to my commentary from last week I said this feels like we are right beyond the precipice we're right on it it's about to happen because everything kind of spiked up see how the values are trying to go higher and higher but then they fall off right here for week 40 because that's the calm right before the storm the pause I could feel it then bam this is then we get hit with Alaska then bam we get hit with New Caledonia let's go look at the uh, which looks rather impressive when you have them both together on the opposite ends of the, this is the origination zone this is the conversion zone right here so we had one pop in the uh, origination zone and one pop just uh, maybe just a hair north I mean, you can include Alaska in this convergent zone it's right here it, volcanic and seismic tectonic energies going from this direction around the Pacific Ocean ring of fire to converge right here that's why Cascadia rising exercises that's why Cascadia warnings about the big one because of the way that the pressures are, go are coming from the, here and going around to here through our buoyancy barrier corridors so that's a look you notice a far higher number of deep earthquake events 11 of them as I counted them yesterday looks like there's more even there now this could be remember we had 50 of these and, and 60 of these in a single week receding the jolt at the 90 degree position that sends energy down the corridors it pops up these horn formations you see all the quakes at the 10 kilometer depth 10 kilometer depth 10 kilometer depth this is triggered this is from harmonic tremors taking place over here the corridor runs right through here see the ones at Cascadia at the 10 kilometer depth a horn formation horn formations there are being popped up energy courses through test the terminal end up here in this area and then so you get a you get a bounce in those horn formations on the way in and on the way back because when this energy hits the end of that corridor it comes back in this direction so that's why you get multiple events when you're near the end of the corridor it's right there and I believe that diagram is pulled up note that diagram is not pulled up showing the horn formations that, that pop up so that's a look at solar system scope I mean that's a look at earthquake 3d where we are right now and uh, this is the position on November 30th when Alaska quake it's the Alaska the Sun and at this time then mark was showing us the anomaly when actually it's going to be a Jupiter black star assisted the second one is going to be the anomaly the New Caledonia we had to move around just a little bit further to hit that that guy we hit black star and Jupiter first and that's the thing when you go back in time and I can show you as we get uh, further down in the newsletter that these backside alignments have been coming in pairs for years which I realized 2016 and 17 and now 18 obviously but then went back in time and looked at 2014 and 15 and realized backside alignment events were misidentified and you'll see that here in the newsletter by the way those keeping score Ryan got a hit here on his November 30th the next the next window you see it came just before the 10th because that is the anomaly 
you put the anomaly into the equation and that's going to give you a window here the one I was talking about the one that Mark was pointing to as being around the 8th and my suspicion was it was going to come a little bit sooner well that's the jolt that we got it seems to me that Jupiter hasn't moved far enough away from black star position Jupiter hasn't moved far away enough for this line to cause the vortex to shift that much that far so when for years now the last four years Jupiter's been approaching this line and the vortex was on this side so we've been having multiples on the back side because of planetary influences black star and the vortex thing is whenever the Jupiter's over on this side coming this way then you're in the vortex anomalies there you see what I mean which comes first the gravity jolt or the electromagnetic jolt now we have the flip on the opposite side those are the kind of things I'm looking at going back through the data right now and uh, doing comparative analysis for last year's I want to know the time differential between the two events and to see if there's a pattern there the number I'm working with here for this recent in the degree department is eight I believe 8.64 degrees I want to go back and see if that how that di differential varies as we go back as we get forward in time for example the the time differential between the magneto pause reversals December 12th 2012 the alignment event came eight days later eight degrees then in 2016 it came five days the back side the near side alignment quake event came five days that's a five degree differential see how the, the differential for the for that um, that data is closing it's getting smaller because black star is getting closer I want to look at the differentials for these backside alignment events. If I skip down here in this newsletter, then I could, I could, uh, I'm going to do that in the longer report and, sh and show you the data and uh, my line of thinking there. Deep quakes here, it's an energy along quarter two. That's been what's going, going on traditionally. Now that the, this was a pretty much straight line corridor, it's not anymore. Not since the magma plume formation push, pushed under Hawaii, it's heading towards Cascadia. More and more activity is going to be happening over here just because of background harmonic tremor activity. Deep magma plume waves coursing through the corridors. This blob is getting closer and closer and closer. So the background noise is getting louder and louder and louder if you live in the United States. Origination zone, convergence zone. Right over here. Deep earthquakes over here on this side. You have three new volcanic eruptions this week. They all happened along this corridor. We had this activity. It appears... I mean, years ago, this type of energy always went this direction. Now, since this this is opening up up here, a lot of this energy is going up quarter one too, making its way down around quarter four. To quarter three, if you look right here, is being kind of left down. Not as much activity. We had the quake swarm area here at Greece. It backed up here in along the Iraqi Iranian border. Now that's trying to diminish. Almost everything's at the 10 kilometer depth. This is all going to be magma plume triggered. It's like what you see down here. This was made yesterday, this chart. No activity along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. I mean, all the way until you get to here. See that uh, Greenland, Iceland region right there? That's because of activity along corridor one. That's near the terminal end. Corridor one that has pushed over the North Pole and is now in this region right here. So the more activity you get along one, the more activity you get around here in Newfoundland, Iceland. And we're near the peak of the uptick period. So that's whenever the, the ends of the corridors are pushed at their maximum distance. At least that's the way it was previously. Now that we have mantle plume connections being made, the dynamic shifting again. For like the sixth time in the last two decades, the global tectonic um, volcanic dynamic is shifting because of the magma plume formation that's becoming the dominant and primary trigger. Like I said, only three. These are the same locations as last week. Add Guatemala and one in Indonesia, and you had five from last week. One reason that you're not going to get that much new activity yet, going along quarter two, is because all the volcanoes are erupting all the way up and down from Chile to uh, Mexico. So when you have constant gushing, it's difficult to have a new volcanic eruption. Project supporters include Patricia. Lonely subscriber for this week. Appreciate your support very, very much, Patricia. Lawrence, Mark, and uh, Cornell, William, Janice, Richard, Linda, Florian, Danny, and Clay. They made their 2018 subscription payments. Longtime supporters of the research. Paul made a donation at the website. Newsletter subscription, $25 per year. 
Survivor Group and newsletter subscription, $50 per year. Subscribe now and get my ebook, the ebook version of The Mystery Explained, for free. Be attached to your notification email. Then, uh, I guess, like I said, lots of information to share. I want to show you how to access Mark's Dropbox folder information so you can keep up with the images that are already there. So, uh, once you catch the uh, subscriber supporters, you need to catch the long report. And it's going to be a lot more information. We're going to get down into some of these articles. And I'm going to show you how to access, if you don't already know, it's very, very simple. I already have the uh, Dropbox folder opened. And we'll show you. Point right to the the uh, folder that you want to go to the file click on it that's where Mark's Dropbox folder link is so thank you guys very very much appreciate your support exciting times for the research and I'm gonna get on to that long report right now get more information right here at the website 003.com